All right, welcome back to our unit on the mole. Today's topic is mole ratios and chemical reactions. Lesson 404, your objectives are as follows. Okay, today you'll understand how the coefficients in a balanced equation give the relative number of moles in a chemical reaction. Okay, you'll learn how the mole ratio is a conversion factor that can be used to relate the amount of moles in a chemical reaction. Okay, and finally you'll learn how to calculate and solve problems that involve mole ratios in chemical reactions. Okay. So for your quick write, consider the following reactions. Okay. Are both of these reactions balanced? Why or why not? Okay. And then consider a simple sandwich recipe below. How is the chemical reaction below it, okay, similar to the recipe above? Okay, so how are these two similar? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, so moles and reactions. Chemical reactions are like a recipe, essentially. For example, consider a simple sandwich recipe below. Two slices of bread plus one slice of meat makes one sandwich. Okay, you can see that a specified amount of each ingredient is needed to produce one sandwich. Well, the same holds true for chemical reactions. Okay, precise amounts of chemicals are needed in order for a reaction to occur. For example, consider the synthesis reaction below where hydrogen gas, H2 here, reacts with carbon monoxide to produce one molecule of methanol. Okay. Notice, just like our slices of bread and meat, it is the coefficients, 2, 1, and 1 here, in a balanced chemical reaction that tell us exactly how many molecules or atoms are needed in order for the reaction to proceed. Okay, so for this case, two molecules of H2, one molecule of CO makes one molecule of methanol. Okay, so in other words, every chemical reaction tells us exactly what is required and in what amounts, just like a recipe. It is important to recognize that the coefficients here, two, one and one here in a balanced equation give the relative number of molecules, right? So two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of carbon monoxide, and one molecule of methanol. We can multiply this balanced equation by any number and still have a balanced equation. So for example, let's say we need to make 50 sandwiches. To do this, we need our original sandwich recipe, okay? By multiplying our recipe by 50, this tells you how many slices of bread and meat you need to make 50 sandwiches. Okay, so in this case, you need 100 slices of bread, 50 slices of meat to make 50 sandwiches. Okay, well chemistry isn't much different. Instead of sandwiches, chemists work with moles. Let's say you need to make 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methanol. Okay, well to do this, we need a balanced chemical reaction seen below just like a recipe. By multiplying our chemical reaction by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we can produce 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methanol here. Okay, this gives us 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen gas here, H2. It gives us 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon monoxide. Okay, and this will produce the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methanol we need to make. Okay, so we also know that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole. Therefore, we can write our equation in terms of moles. Two moles of H2 plus one mole of carbon monoxide will make one mole of methanol. Okay, so it is important to realize above that our initial balanced equation and coefficients allowed us to create our one mole quantity of methanol here, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methanol. Okay, so what we once called coefficients can now be considered moles. Okay, so basically we don't call them coefficients anymore. We call these numbers moles. Okay, just as two slices of bread and one slice of meat is used to make a sandwich, you can think of moles in a chemical reaction as the amount of ingredients necessary for the reaction to take place. A balanced chemical equation can be used to determine how many moles of reactants or products are required okay, or produced in a chemical reaction. For example, in the above reaction, two moles of H2 here okay, require one mole of carbon monoxide to make 
one mole here of methanol. We can write this as a ratio. So two moles of H2, okay, requires one mole of carbon monoxide, according to our recipe, just as two slices of bread require one slice of meat to make a sandwich, okay? Or two moles of H2, okay, produces one mole of methanol, just as two slices of bread makes one sandwich, okay? Or produces one sandwich. So we call the ratios below mole ratios. The mole ratio is a conversion factor that can be used to relate the moles of product produced here, okay, from a certain number of moles of reactant. So if we have two moles of H2, we can make one mole of methanol, okay? It is also used to relate the moles of reactant required to produce a certain number of moles of product. For example, two moles of H2 require one mole of carbon monoxide. So just as two pieces of bread are required to make a sandwich, the mole ratio is similar to a recipe because it tells us what quantities are required in order for a chemical reaction to proceed, okay? Okay, so what is the mole ratio? Question on the left-hand side, answer and examples, please, on the right-hand side of your notes. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm gonna move on. Okay, so practice. Try to answer these three questions below here, okay? Go ahead and pause this while you work on them. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, so question one. According to the reaction below, three moles of NO2 can produce how many moles of HNO3? So three moles of NO2 can produce two moles of HNO3. Okay, number two. According to the reaction below, how many moles of O2 are required to completely react with two moles of H2? So... Two moles of H2 requires, okay, one mole of O2. And according to the reaction below here, for question three, one mole of C6H12 requires how many moles of H2? Well, one mole of this requires, okay, three moles of H2. Okay, hopefully you did okay on those. All right, so moles and reactions. Let's say we would like to make 10 moles of methanol. Okay, this begs the question, how many moles of hydrogen and carbon monoxide are needed to make 10 moles of methanol? Our balanced, our original balanced chemical reaction below will allow us to do this. Okay, by multiplying our moles in the reaction below by 10, we can produce 10 moles of methanol. Okay, so this gives us, we need 20 moles of H2 along with 10 moles of carbon monoxide to make the 10 moles of methanol needed. Okay. The balanced reaction above tells us that if we start with 20 moles of hydrogen gas and 10 moles of carbon monoxide gas, we can produce the 10 moles of methanol, okay? So, once again, practice. Work on these two examples, please. Go ahead and pause this while you work on them, okay? And hit play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so using the equation below, how many moles of O2 are produced by four moles of H2? We got to use our original equation here. Okay, and if we multiply everything by two, okay, this will give us four moles of water, which will produce, okay, two moles here of oxygen. So the answer is two moles of oxygen. Okay, next one. Using the equation below, okay, how many moles of N2 are produced by one mole of ammonia? All right, well, if we multiply our equation by a half, this will give us one mole of ammonia, which will produce 0.5 moles of N2 and 1.5 moles of H2. Okay, therefore, the answer is 0.5 moles of N2, okay? So, mole ratio problems. Consider the following problem here. According to the reaction below, how many moles of H2O can be produced from 18.31 moles of oxygen, O2? Okay, we need our balanced chemical reaction here. Okay, once again, we're starting with our steps here. Step one, start with what the problem gives you. 18.31 moles of O2, okay? Step two, what are the conversion factors? Well, the question involves moles of H2O produced from 18.31 moles of oxygen. So moles of oxygen and moles of H2O. OK, 
Okay, well, it looks like it's this one right here. So, set up the calculation so the units calc cancel. One mole of O2 here requires two moles of H2O. Our moles of O2 cancel, leaving us with the moles of H2O. Okay. Solve the problem. 18.31 times 2 divided by 1 gives us 36.62 moles of H2O. Okay. So go ahead and practice. Okay. Consider the following problem. According to the reaction below, how many moles of H2 are required to completely react with 7.08 moles of O2? Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you practice this. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, so step one, start with what the problem gives you. 7.08 moles of O2, okay? Step two, what are the conversion factor? The question deals with moles of H2 and moles of O2. Well, which one of these requires moles of H2 and moles of O2? Right here, so there's our, con there's our mole ratio that we need, okay? So set up the calculation so the units cancel. One mole of O2 down here, so our units of moles of O2 cancel. Okay, one mole of O2 requires two moles of H2. Our units cancel. Okay, now we can solve the problem. 7.08 times 2 divided by 1 gives us 14.16 moles of H2. All right. Okay, practice. Last one. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right. So as always, okay, start with what the problem gives you. Okay. In this case, moles of H2, 53.12. Okay. What are the conversion factor? Okay. The question is dealing with moles of H2 and moles of H2O. Okay. So which one of these deals with moles of H2O and moles of H2? Okay, it looks like our middle one here. So set up the calculations so the units cancel. We know that two moles of H2 require or can produce two moles of H2. Oh, our units of H2, moles of H2 cancel. 53.12 times 2 divided by 2, okay, will give us 53.12 moles of H2O in this case. All right, hopefully you did well on those. Okay, go ahead and summarize. Okay, you can always write your own. All right, for an easy 20 points, finish your summary, and we'll see you next time.